This is Tim Tucker, AE6LX with WorldWideDX.com, and I'm here with WB6NOA Gordon West, and he's got a really interesting 10 gigahertz setup that he just educated me on, and I'm going to let him talk to us and tell us a little, little bit about this uh, entire setup and what you can do on 10 gigahertz if you want to as well. So, Gordon, first tell us a little bit about the 10 gigahertz band and give us a, a real high level overview of the equipment that you've got here, and then we'll get into some of the details and you can show us how this works and, and, and all the details. All right, well, the 10 gigahertz band, Tim, is up at 10,368 megahertz. We affectionately call that the X band, very close to the marine radar band. Uh, we do amateur television up there, we do moon bounce at 10 gigahertz, and as you see here today, we do field day and we do voice as well as CW on 10 gigahertz. And up on 10 gigahertz, things are quite different in that we don't use use coax cable for the main feed. In fact, let's take a look and uh, we'll start from the antenna and work in, okay? Sounds good, let's do it. Up on X-band, 10,368 megahertz, we don't use Yagi antennas, but rather we use dish antennas. And this dish antenna has what we call a cassegrain feed. And that is the energy comes in, bounces off the dish, is focused on this element right here, and then that travels down the center tube. And the cassegrain feed is a fairly tight antenna, but we've had this out Maritime Mobile, and it's loose enough that we can hold the position to a distant station hundreds of miles away thanks to the forgiveness of the dish antenna. The 10,000 megahertz signal will come out of this circular and transform into flexible waveguide. Is that cool? We can't use any coax, but rather flexible waveguide to take that signal up to the transverter. And what the transverter is, is this green box in back of my local oscillator radio. And the transverter is going to take information at 10368.1 and transform it down to the 2 meter band. Some folks will have it down to the 28 megahertz band, but I like the 2 meter band because I had a radio already for it. Conversely, when we transmit on the 2 meter band, it goes into the transverter at a very low level, about 500 milliwatts, and then that kicks it up to 10368 megahertz, and ultimately that then comes out of the transverter into the flexible waveguide and into the dish antenna, and let's see if we can pick up any signals. On the 10 gigahertz band, we have microwave beacons. And these beacons are maintained by 10 gigahertz activists that keep them on the air 24-7. And we've tuned into a couple of them. One is up in Palos Verdes, and one is up on Fraser Peak. Well, if we aren't tuned right on the beacon, here is what you hear. Just plain old noise, but let's rotate the dish and see what happens. And we're getting reception, and in just a few moments, you're going to hear the beacon identify. In order to get a good signal into our parabolic dish antenna, we have to make sure that the dish is pointed exactly level at the distant beacon. And right now, well, we aren't quite level. Let's take a look at our little plumb bob, bring it down here. Oh boy, that made a difference, huh? Let me turn up the volume. And now, we're right at the beacon, just kissing the dish. We're rolling. So Gordon, tell us a little bit about how you can put together a uh, a, a 10 gigahertz station like this and where we can go to find out more information to do something like this on our own. 
The 10 gigahertz station is really a homebrew type of project. The equipment comes out of Europe, and uh, we'll get you that information at the end of this little podcast. Uh, but the transceiver is a local one that comes out of most 2 meter radios or 10 meter radios, but we have to reduce the power output so we don't overdrive the transverter. The transverter is going to put out about 2 or 3 watts, and if we turn up the volume at 10, 3, 68.1. Let's take a look and see what happens when I stand. And this is on receive. Let's see what happens when I stand in front of the dish. Hear that noise go away? Yeah, it went right away. My body makes a good, uh, a good soaker upper of signals. And there's the ID. Hey, it's right. It's right in there. Every t every ten minutes, right? Uh, that's right. That's right. So. We hope that all of you will be interested in learning more about 10 gigahertz and San Bernardino Microwave Society, sbms.org, is a great place to look up how to put together your own 10 gig station. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Gordon West with Ham Nation TV and Tim Tucker, AE6LX with WorldWideDX.com, and we hope you found this informative about 10 gigahertz.